Do you need to replace a color in a photo to enhance visual appeal or to help your images look cohesive? Well, you might be interested to know that Photolab has some pretty competent tools to get the job done. No need for Photoshop. In this video, we're going to be sharing four tips on replacing color with DxO Photolab 8 to get the most out of its powerful tools. So let's get right into it. The first tip is to know the easiest method to replace a color. The easiest way to change a color is to use the HSL palette located inside the color palette, which is used for global color adjustments. To demonstrate, let's work on this image. Let's turn the yellow flowers pink and the blue sky yellow. I'll navigate to the HSL palette by clicking on the color button. I'll specify yellow as the color to replace. You can do that in any of two ways, via the picker, or by directly selecting the channel. I'll choose the latter method and select the yellow channel. Doing that, you can see the color wheel now shows the selected hues. To visually inspect which colors are affected in the image, I'll control click on Windows or command click on the Mac on the selected hues. As you can see, that gives a preview of the selection. Areas shown in color are selected while those in gray are not. Unfortunately though, we can see there are errors. Significant parts of the flowers are incorrectly in gray. No problem, I'll extend the range to include more hues in the selection. To do that, I'll drag the handles outward. There, the range has been extended. Once again, I'll control click to inspect the selection. As you can see, it's now much better. All the flowers are now correctly shown in color while the sky entirely in gray. As the selection is looking good, let's replace the color. The tool to use for that is the color wheel. I'll rotate the outer wheel and as you can see, that changes the hue. I'll align the handle to the target color, pink. I'll reduce the saturation. And there you go, we've changed the flower's colors. Next, let's work on the sky. This time, I'll use the picker to select the sky. And as you can see, that automatically selects the blue channel. Again, I'll control click the selected hues to check for any errors. As it's looking good, I'll move the outer handle to align with yellow. I'll increase the saturation. And there you go, the colors of both the flowers and the sky are replaced with not much effort. You can also use the same workflow to change the color of clothes as you can see here. The second tip is to know when to use the local HSL palette. To demonstrate the concept, let's work to turn the lady's red dress blue while the green leaves brown. Once again, I'll start off by using the same tool, the global HSL palette. I'll select the red channel. Again, I'll inspect the selection by control clicking on the selected hues. Unfortunately though, there is a problem. The color red is not unique to the dress, being also present in the lips and skin. Moving the outer handle, you can see how that gives undesired results that degrade image quality. As the global HSL palette is not working, let's move on to the alternative which is the local HSL palette located under the local adjustments palette. As the name suggests, the local HSL palette allows you to make color adjustments to specific areas via masking. But which masking tool is best? And that brings us to the third tip, which is to know the best masking tool for local HSL adjustments. Now, which tool is it? One tool I won't recommend though is the hue mask tool, which automatically creates a mask based on a specific color. While the hue mask tool seems to be a great fit, in reality, it is pretty error prone as you can see here. To compound the problem, it only works with a regular erase tool with no edge detection and limited capability to create a precise mask. Another masking tool option is the control point. While this is a much better option than hue mask, it has its own drawback where since it behaves like a radial gradient, it won't produce an even mask out of the box. 
you need a lot more work to mitigate that. So if it is not the hue mask tool nor the control point, which is the best tool? The tool I would recommend for most cases would be the auto mask tool. The main advantage of auto mask is it gives an even mask out of the box, which is great for consistent color adjustments. It also has built-in edge detection, which allows for precise masking. As you can see, while it's pretty easy to use, you will quickly observe that one drawback of auto mask is it does not give an accurate preview of the mask. It spills over the edges, which may cause beginners to rant and rave about the poor quality of Photolab's masking tools. In reality though, the edges are being detected even though it is not visually depicted in the mask. To verify this, I'll increase the exposure. As you can see, Auto Mask has actually done a pretty good job, much better than what the mask is showing. However, there are still some minor errors. Let's fix it. There, the mask is done. Now let's navigate to the local HSL palette. With the red channel, I'll move the outer handle to align with blue. And there you go, a perfect color replacement. Alternatively, since we are performing a local adjustment, you could also have used the global channel instead of the red channel, and it will give the same results. Next, let's move to replace the leaves color. Unlike the dress where red was not unique throughout the image, the green of the leaves is. As such, I'll forego the local HSL palette and move back to the global HSL palette, which takes far less steps as it does not require any masking operations. And there you go, our final image. The fourth tip is to know which masking tool to use for replacing color in complex edges. While auto mask is great for most cases, when it comes to complex edges such as those present in hair or fur, it is best to use a tool which is designed for such a task. To demonstrate, let's turn this guy's brown hair blonde. As the hair's hue is not unique throughout the image, it has a similar hue to the skin. The best tool to use is the local HSL palette. But which masking tool should we use for hair? In the absence of AI masking, DxO's tool for complex masking is the control point. I'll add in the points and make sure the points overlap to allow for an even mask. I'll also add negative control points by pressing the Alt or Option key to protect his face from being included in the mask. There, the mask is looking good. I'll select the globals channel since the hair color is not accurately represented in any of the color channels. I'll move the handle. By the way, to get a better view of any masking errors, I recommend to switch to the black and white mode. And there you go, the final adjustment. Here is the before and the after. So I hope you found this video helpful. As you can see, Photolab has some of the most effective and intuitive tools for replacing colors. Let me know if you have any other questions or if you know other methods of replacing colors in DxO Photolab, write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.